Well, hello there, good people. It's Johnny J here, and welcome to another episode of the 3C Show. And as always, I am super excited to be here. Today on the show, I'm gonna give you my top tips for creating perfect panoramas. All right, let's get into it. So you might be wondering, Johnny, why panoramas? Where has this come from? Well, this month in the th uh, Three Colors uh, online Discord community, we are doing panoramas as our monthly exercise. So here's my top tips I'm gonna give to those guys and also share with you. And if you're interested in finding out more about my free online community, photography community, there'll be a link below. Okay, so check that out and I'd love to see you in there. All right, so let's get into my first tip. Okay, tip number one. <laughs> uh, first thing is, take your camera off your tripod. You know, visualizing your composition of a panorama is can be quite difficult. When you think about it, you know, when we're taking standard photos, everything that we're going to capture is we can see through the viewfinder on the back of the LCD. So it's really important, take your camera off the tripod if you're shooting a horizontal panorama, hold it up to your eye, look through the viewfinder, try and visualize your start point and your end point of the panorama. And that'll, you know, if you keep running back and forth through the scene like this while you're looking through, then you'll soon work out, you know, where your main elements of your scene are going to sit. So it's a pleasing composition, all right? The other thing you can do is will also shoot a little bit wider than what you think you're gonna need and shoot a little bit few more frames out past what you think you're gonna need because the final image when you stitch it together is gonna be massive amount of pixels okay so you'll have heaps of room to crop and straighten things in post so that's gonna really help you uh, visualize and also get your final composition my second tip is lens selection. Honestly, you don't wanna to go too much wider than 24 mil. And the reason being, even at 24 mil, you're getting some distortion, uh, a little bit of distortion on most lenses, okay? So you really don't wanna go any wider than 24 mil, all right? And the reason being is that distortion, not only does it make it harder for the software to stitch your images in post, okay? But um, you'll find that once you've stitched them together, you're gonna to have to do a lot of manipulating the image to try and balance out the objects in the scene because that distortion can make things look really funky by the time you've uh, you know, stitched all your images together. You might have a big bend in your beach or the foreground elements might be really distorted. So I recommend you know, no wider than 24 mil. And if, you, if you're finding it's not, you need to use a wider you know, focal length of 24 mil, then it, try and back up from your scene. That's it, back up and zoom in and no wider than 24 mil. And of course, you can go out to those longer focal lengths, you know, up to 80, 100 mil even if you need to, all right, for picking out those details and creating a non-distorted panoramas. That's the key. Less distortion equals easier, easier for you and your post-processing to make things look right. My next tip is to lock, lock your camera down on a tripod, okay? This is really gonna help keep things level throughout your scene and uh, help you when you stitch things together for your post-processing too. All right, so level out your tripod, turn the level on on the back of your camera, level out your camera. I also recommend you turn the grid lines on on your back of the camera, and then that, that'll help you, you know, line the grid lines up with the horizon, so when you're panning through the scene on the tripod, you can get a bit of an idea to make sure everything's looking nice and straight, and that's really gonna help you when you stitch things together in post to have everything looking nice and straight. My next tip is if you're going to be shooting a vertical panorama, then have your camera and landscape orientation to, to shoot your panorama. And if you're going to be shooting a horizontal panorama, then have your camera in portrait orientation to shoot through the scene. And that's just going to help things, keep things nice and level. And again, just make it easier for you to create your panorama. So when it comes to camera settings, you really want your camera in manual. You want to be making all the decisions for your camera. You can imagine if you've got a bright spot over here in your scene and you've got a darker area over here, you don't want the camera you know, underexposing this side and then overexposing the shadows over here. You're gonna have an uneven exposure throughout the scene. So setting your camera in manual, setting the aperture, setting the ISO and shutter speed is really, really important to get that consistent exposure throughout your scene. That's really important. Now, I would recommend you set your exposure to the brightest highlights in your scene. You can create a HDR panorama, meaning you can shoot bracketed images if need be, okay? That's just adding another complexity to your panorama and Lightroom has a really nice feature where you can create that 
HDR panorama if you do need to bracket because your camera is not capturing all that dynamic range in one frame, okay? So that's really important to remember that option is there if you need it. But if you're finding you've just got some brighter areas over here, it's not direct sun and some darker shadows, yeah, just expose for the highlights, okay? That's, that's really, really important when you're creating a basic panorama. And also, you want to use a manual white balance. One of the presets is fine, you know, daylight or shady or cloudy or one of those is fine, okay? You don't want your white balance changing throughout your frames. That's just going to help you in post as well. And you also want to set your focus, okay? So find your frame, set your focus for one of your, for your first frame, okay? Set your focus point and then change your camera into manual focus so it's not gonna refocus as you move throughout the scene. That's really, really important. You could imagine if you've got your single point focus, okay, and you're focused over here and your first frame's right, and then you move around for your second frame, and there happens to be a tree sticking up right in the foreground, it's gonna refocus there, and then you're gonna end up with a soft background, okay? So really, really important. Set that focus point, you know, that usual, that third up into the scene usually works for this. Uh, type of shots when you haven't got too close to foreground, okay, and that's going to keep things nice and sharp and then switch it to manual once you've set your focus. And the last thing you want to do is just turn on that two second timer so your hands can be free of that camera and stop any camera shake, okay, and you want to overlap your images at least 30%, okay. Sometimes I'll do 50, 50 to, you know, 50 to 30% is a good range to overlap your photographs, okay. So just as you're moving through the scene, just visualizing where your last frame finished and just going to that 50 to 30%. And uh, when you get home and stitch it, you should have a perfect panorama. All right, guys, that's it for this show. I hope you enjoyed that one. Uh, panoramas are fun and I find it's something we often forget to use when we're in the field. So get out there, have a play around, create some awesome panoramas. And uh, as always, if you enjoyed this video, please share it with your friends. That's really, really important to get the word out about three colors and what I'm doing. That's how you can uh, support me and uh, leave me a like and a comment below or a thumbs up. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. All right, I'm out. Cheers.